Greetings to all of you. Um, the purpose in doing this video is to share some thoughts on the perseverance that Rahul Gandhi has shown in reaching out to the tormented people of Manipur without any distinction based on uh, um, the tribes. Uh, he is reportedly visiting the relief camps meant both for the Metes and for the Cookies, uh, the two tribes that are in conflict in uh, Manipur. Now what is commendable about this, and I would say what's incredible about this, is that Rahul Gandhi has now shown the resolve, the steely resolve, to pursue his sense of mission. Yesterday I watched with great disappointment and in fact anguish the way his mission was being obstructed and in fact sought to be thwarted. He was uh, asked actually to go back and exit Manipur, uh, which he refused to do. I'm glad that he refused to do. I have to say that this is a new Rahul Gandhi quite different from the Rahul I have known in the past. And in a previous video, I have given some indication that I have known him from 1989. And I need to now share my thoughts with you about my understanding of this very profound and incredible change that has come over Rahul Gandhi. Um, I was, for example, quite disappointed with Rahul Gandhi when, uh, shall I say, demonetization took place. When a certain action on the part of the government, I have nothing against the government, I, my feelings are entirely for and with the people. The, the, the precipitous action on the part of the government, for whatever reasons, caused inordinate, indescribable agony, suffering to the people of India. That was a cause that Rahul Gandhi should have espoused and addressed with consistent uh, determination. Uh, and unfortunately, that was found wanting and I expressed my great disappointment with him at that time through a couple of articles I published in, uh, on a, a digital publication called Daily O, uh, published by India Today, where I used to have a column. But the Rahul Gandhi I see today, I'm glad to say, is radically, substantially, and I would say even challengingly different from the Rahul of those days. The Rahul of 2016 would have beaten a retreat from Manipur when obstacles were placed in this way. But today it's different. How do we understand this? I would understand this personal transformation, which is a rare thing to happen in the domain of politics. It's a spiritual thing, it's not a political thing. I would attribute this personal transformation, perceptible and powerful, that we now sense in Rahul Gandhi to the Bharat Jodo Yatra. And therefore, in hindsight, and this is what I commend particularly to my young friends, those who are neutral, those who have no access to grind, those who do not belong to any political camp, and those who are therefore free to think freely, rationally, and humanely, and are also free to recognize what is right and beautiful in others. Today, it has become a fashion to be blind to the beauty of others and to have a thousand eyes to see the, the demerits of others, or, what is, or to find fault with people. Um, I would rather uh, discover the beauties in people, irrespective of which camp they belong to. I'm not blind to the strengths of Narendra Modi. I'm not blind to the strengths of, uh, say, Arvind Kejriwal or Mamata Banerjee uh, or uh, any other politician for that matter. Um, and nothing in the world shall prevent me from seeing and appreciating what is good and beautiful in a human being because we live in a cynical age and the cynical age is corrupting, crippling and destroying us by making us incapable 
of appreciating what is good, true and beautiful in fellow human beings. We must change in this respect. Anyway, let me give you my understanding of this very profound and promising change that Rahul Gandhi has definitely undergone. I've, now this is no longer in the realm of speculation. This is absolutely real and perceptible. Now, I want to understand this, or I, I understand this, in relation to the Bharat Jodo Yatra. As I said in a previous uh, video, undertaking a journey of that kind, a yatra of that kind, is not a small thing. Um, in fact, I was uh, skeptical if Rahul Gandhi would complete that journey given the stress and the rigor of that undertaking, but he did. But something very beautiful, something very powerful, something very profound seems to have happened within him in the course of that journey. And therefore, in hindsight, I would say that it was not a yatra, it was a pilgrimage. And in saying so, I have the definition of pilgrimage that uh, the Venerable Dalai Lama has given to us. And let me quote his words, and I think I'm quoting fairly accurately, though I uh, quote this from memory. <clears throat> um, the Dalai Lama said, No journey at the end of which the traveler remains unchanged is a pilgrimage. Or to put it more positively, or paraphrase it in my own, language, my own words, a pilgrimage is a journey in the course of which the person who undertakes the pilgrimage is transformed. And I think that has happened in the case of Rahul Gandhi. And therefore, he is going to be a force to reckon with. I don't know about the political side of it. I'm no longer active even in political analysis, political commentary. There was a time I used to write political commentary for various newspapers. I don't do that anymore. I am, my perspective today is purely spiritual, is disinterested, uh, impartial, and dispassionate. Uh, I tell you today that Rahul Gandhi is going to be a force to reckon with because I'm a Gandhian in my thought. Gandhi believed in the incomparable power of the spirit. And now let me quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi said that the world cannot remain indifferent to the stirring of the spirit wherever it happens. The world cannot remain indifferent to the stirring of the spirit or the power of the spirit or the, the irresistible uh, magnetic power of the spirit, spirit, uh, the godly element in human beings. Most people do not develop their spiritual power and therefore their personality remains weak, shallow and important. But at least in a few individuals, by the mercy of God, and because of the exigencies of the age in which we live, uh, the power, the, the spirit begins to wake up and the power of the spirit begins to be manifest. Now the French philosophers, political philosophers, had a view that the moment makes the man. The moment makes the man. That is to say, history has this very unique ability to throw up leaders who can meet the requirements of the particular age, particularly when the age seems to be gravitating towards a crisis. In India, of course, there is a similar thought, the doctrine of the avatar in Hindu thought, namely, when uh, uh, atharma uh, increases, when disorder and anarchy threatens to overrun the order, the dharmic order, God intervenes in the form of various avatars. We have had 10 avatars already and any time God can intervene to set the order right. Uh, so uh, the idea of a special intervention and um, uh, in Christian thought also this idea exists in the sense that God chooses certain individuals through whom the divine intervention takes place and such individuals are called co-workers with God and they carry within themselves the remedial or redemptive or healing powers, the powers to impart a healing touch to the particular age or society in which they live. And I think we are witnessing something like this in the transformation that we so joyfully sense in the person of Rahul Gandhi. Now, I'm not saying this with reference to Rahul Gandhi as an individual, the individual I have known in the past, 
when he was a student of St. Stephen's College and subsequently in, a, uh, in certain contexts. I am not commenting on that individual at all. I am now commenting. I have forgotten that individual altogether. I have cast that individual out of my mind and my line of thinking. From now onwards, my focus, my attention will be riveted entirely to this man of the moment in French thought, this man of the moment. And in Christian thought, if you like, the instrument of the individual used by God in order to intervene in the plight, in the predicament and destiny of a people, something that Gandhi understood and accepted. In an article that, we pub that he published in 1937 in the Harijan, Gandhi wrote this about himself, and I quote again from memory. He said, I am an instrument in the hand of God to lead the people of India to freedom. So Gandhi understood himself as an instrument in the hand of God for a particular profound historic mission to be accomplished. So all this are similar thoughts and therefore I, from now onwards I will view, I will understand, I will monitor, I will view the activities, initiatives and personality of Rahul Gandhi as a man of the moment in the French line of thinking and as an instrument to borrow the words of Gandhi, an instrument in the hand of God to bring about a particular effect in the un continuous unfolding of the spirit of India, the soul of India. And if you recall in a previous video, I said very shortly, very crisply, only suggestively without uh, uh, going into explanations, I said that even though Mahatma Gandhi is being vil vilified, and the Mahatma is sought to be gradually substituted with something, someone else, whoever that person may be. I don't have to explain these things to you. Even though Gandhi is now increasingly falling upon evil days and his reputation or his, his position of respect as the father of the nation is seriously under siege, precisely at that point, the true Gandhian spirit is waking up in a young man. His name is Rahul Gandhi. Jai Hind.